Welcome everybody to our Wednesday night service. Again, my name is Christian, uh, one of the pastors here. I have the honor of leading our small group ministry, which is just a fancy way to say I, I get the privilege of helping people get connected to care and discipleship growth. And it's, it's one of the most fulfilling and uh, just rewarding things in the world. I also get the honor to help people take their first step into leadership here at the Wayworld Outreach. But I also want to take a moment to honor our senior pastor, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. If you're at home right now, just give them a little hand clap. If they've blessed your life at all, they've truly blessed me and I'm honored to learn from a man of God that, that I believe it, it, it is someone that hears from God like no one I've, I've ever known. And I'm just so honored that he would entrust me with bringing the word tonight. So I, I, I honor this pulpit humbly and I can only rely on God for a moment like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to dive into scripture and we're picking up on a series we're doing Wednesday night called A Journey Through the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to go verse by verse through the Gospel of Matthew. The book of Matthew, it's the first book of the New Testament and the gospel of Matthew is covering the life of, and the ministry of Jesus. It really shows who Jesus is as king, Jesus as our Messiah, as our savior. But I believe tonight, the portion of scripture we're gonna cover is really gonna help us to see and to learn about how Jesus calls us to activate our life's greatest and most fulfilling purpose. Our life's greatest and most fulfilling purpose. I wonder how many of us right now are walking day to day, just living life, going through the motions and not living your greatest purpose. You know, if I, if we're, you know, if I'm being honest, days of my life that I feel like I, I wish I would have got back are days that I wasn't living out my greatest purpose, that I wasn't living up to what God had for me. And I'm sure we can all recall years of our lives that we felt like we wish we could get back, but God is so good because it doesn't matter where you're at right now. Today is a day, tonight is a night that God is calling you to activate your life's greatest purpose and to fulfill what he has called you to do. So let's dive right in. We're gonna go, we're gonna pick up right where we left off. We just covered Jesus fasting for 40 days and Jesus even overcoming temptation from the enemy. We covered all these things. And now we're going to pick up from Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. I'm going to read through the whole portion of scripture all the way to 22. And then we'll go verse by verse and see what the Lord is teaching us. Verse 18 says, One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a, a net into the water for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them. He said, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come too. And they immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. I want to pick up from the first verse, verse 18. And the, the, when, I, when I see this verse, I see it says, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. You know, when we, when we picture someone walking along the sea or walking along the shore, we probably picture, you know, the sun shining, a beautiful day, the waves, the ocean waves, just just, you know, a relaxing leisure walk, Jesus walking, enjoying his time. You know, he's probably got a little lemonade, maybe a little sunscreen on his nose, just enjoying his time. But that's not it at all. Jesus wasn't just taking a stroll. He wasn't just walking just for fun. He wasn't walking just because, you know, he had some time to kill. Jesus was walking with a purpose. He was very intentional what he was doing. And actually, this moment in this day, what, what, we, what we just read, is one of the pivotal life-changing moments, life-changing, uh, 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 historical changing moments that happens. Jesus steps into discipling others. From this moment on, we're going to read through the book of Matthew. 
And all, uh, all the ministry Jesus does, from this moment forward, he's not going to be alone anymore until he goes to the cross. And he's going to have disciples with him. But he did this on purpose. He was very intentional. See, Jesus walks and he searches with a purpose. He walks in, 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 with the purpose in search of his disciples in order to call them to a life of purpose. It wasn't by chance that Peter and, and Andrew were, were hanging out in the boat and fishing. It wasn't by chance that James and John were sitting in the boat repairing their nets. It wasn't by chance. It was destiny. And right now, you're listening to this message. And you may think that you chose or you decided to be here, but this is not chance. This is destiny. See, Jesus has been searching for you. That scripture right there, it says that he saw them. That word saw is aiden, which means to notice, to pay attention to, or to cherish. Jesus sees you. I'm going to say that one more time. Jesus sees you. He notices you. He's paying attention to you. And Jesus cherishes you. Jesus walks with purpose, intently seeing you. But not just to see you, but to call you to himself. It's in the plan of God since the beginning of time to call you to himself. In the same way that Jesus saw the disciples, he sees you right now and he's calling you to himself. It says in Luke 19.10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. See, God's not the one that was lost. We didn't find God. God's the one that found us. We were the lost ones. And right now, we may feel lost in life. We may feel lost like we don't know what to do or where to go. We may feel like we need, we need some help. We, we not, may not know the answer. May, you may be right now, you feel like you have nothing to live for. What God is saying, he came to this earth and he's walking with the purpose specifically to find you because he sees you, he cherishes you, he pays attention to you, and he notices you. He cares for you. Jesus purposely walked this earth so he can find you and call you into a relationship with him. So before you could even choose God, he chose you. Before you could even decide to walk with God, God decided to, to draw you to himself. That means that God already has set in his heart to seek after you, even when you weren't seeking after him. How many are thankful for that? That when I wasn't looking for God, when I wasn't striving for the things of God, he was doing everything he can to find me. And where did he find me? In brokenness. Where did he find me? In a heart full of anger. Where did he find me? A, a life full of rejection. Where did he find me? In a home full of uh, drug abuse, in a, in a fatherless home. Where did he find me lost? Where did he find me confused? Where did he find me miserable? He found me there, but he didn't leave me there. He purposely called me out of that place so he can give me a new start and a new life. And I believe right now he's calling you. Wherever you're at, you may feel lost, abandoned, and broken, but he's calling you right now, today. He's purposely walking and looking for you. So you know what's interesting too, if you go on to that, in verse 18, it says, he saw the two brothers, Simon and Peter. I'm sorry, Simon also called Peter and Andrew. But they were throwing a net into the water for they, they were fishermen for a living. This was, this was their, their life's trade. This is what they did for a living. But I, I wonder, uh, what I really, this really, represents throwing the net what that represents is someone that's busy they're active they maybe got their life established maybe you have things established in your life maybe maybe there are maybe you already have a career or there's things you already you already set your mind to but what I want to what I want to say to you tonight is don't be so busy that you can't hear the call of God in your life so these two they were active they were busy they were moving but when Jesus called them, they what? They responded right away. But don't be so busy throwing your net into the water, 
being active, maybe working your day job or, or, or putting your, 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 your heart into in the things you're doing. This could be a business venture. This could be your personal goals. This could be your education. This could be your achievements. This might even be your relationship. This could, although these things may be good, they're only good until they take the place of God in your heart. How many of us have things in our lives that have taken the place of God in our heart? We've replaced the throne that God should be sitting on in our heart with being busy. And we're so busy that we're telling God, God, not right now, I'm busy. God, not right now, things are going, uh, I'm too busy. I have things going on. Maybe call me back later, God. Uh, leave me a voicemail, I'll get back to you. <laughs> we've, we, we left God on red. You ever left somebody on red? I know I've left someone on red. I'm just confessing. I've left people on red before. We, we left God on red. He texts us and he texts us again. He leaves us a voicemail. He calls us, knocks on our door, writes us a little letter, you know, hits us on Instagram. Uh, God is reaching out to us, reaching out to us, and we just leave him on red. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Don't be so busy with your life that you miss the opportunity to be called into your life's greatest purpose. Did you know we could miss that moment? We could miss that opportunity. Or when God is calling us into this, this purpose and this destiny, don't miss that moment. Don't be so caught up in things that you can't hear the voice of God anymore. And the scary thing is, the more we ignore the voice of God, the less sensitive we are to his voice. It says in 1 John 2, 17, this world is fading away along with, with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God, oh, I'm sorry, anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. See, nothing in this world is going to last. We're not going to take anything with us. The only thing that's going to last are things that have eternal value. Are you so focused on the temporary things of life that you forget on the eternal things that we should be working towards? Are we so focused on the today that we forget about the forever? You know, some of us right now might think it might look like our life, like we're winning, but in actuality, we're losing because we're so fixed on the temporary. We're so busy throwing our net. See, we, know, we might know how to do our career. We might know how to do our education. We might be really good at the things we do. But do we know how to reach people for God? Do we know how to fulfill our life's greatest purpose and what God has created you to do? So as we continue on in verse 19, let's take a look at what happens. Jesus calls out to them. He says, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. So Jesus, he calls us and he redeems us. Now I'm going to explain what I mean by that. See, Jesus, he called the disciples in this moment. But he called them and he's using, he's calling and, and what he's speaking to them, he's saying, I want to use, I want to harness the life experiences, the talents, the things that you've gained in life. And I want to redeem that for my glory. See, Jesus can use, God can turn things around, even things the enemy used for evil. God can turn those things around and use them for his purpose and his glory. See, Jesus can redeem your life, your history, your story for his glory. You may have talents and experiences. You may have, you may have, uh, you may be even experienced some hardship in your life. Maybe a loss, but God can use that as a ministry. I want to highlight a story of a member of our church. You guys might know him, Chris Morgan. So for those that don't know him, Chris has been a member of our church for several years now. And... He's an awesome man of God, but he has a story. You know, Chris was born in Pomona, and during his teenage years there, he got involved in a lot of gangs in Pomona. And we can see, if we have some of the pictures, we can show, this is Chris. This is him. This, is, this was Chris' lifestyle. This is how Chris grew up. Involved in gangs, involved in that lifestyle, running the streets, doing, doing his thing in the streets of Pomona. But if you know Chris today, you know he's still in Pomona. As a matter of fact, he's back in Pomona. 
but not on this mission. He's back on a new mission. God redeemed his story. God redeemed his experiences. God redeemed his upbringing. God redeemed what he was with thought the, en the enemy's plan for his life. God turned all of that around for good. And now we can see that Chris is hitting the streets. That's him and Pastor Robert hitting the streets of Pomona, toiling the ground and getting ready to launch a church out in Pomona. This is a story of what God can do when he could redeem our life experiences. He can redeem the trauma. He can redeem what the enemy tried to do and he can turn it around for good. I cannot wait to hear the stories of Chris and Pomona running into people that he used to run in the streets with that are now at the altar getting set free and getting delivered. I can't wait to hear about the people that maybe he had a, a feud with that are, in, that are serving in ministry in Pomona under his leadership and care. I cannot wait to see the, the, the times that, that, that Chris was taking over territory for the enemy. He's now taking over territory for the kingdom of God. This is what God can do. He calls us and he redeems us. In the same way he called the fishermen, he said, look, you guys are fishing for f actual fish, but I'm going to use all of that right now, and I'm going to show you how to fish for people. I'm going to show you how to use all of this talent. I'm going to show you how to use all of this hardship. I'm going to show you how to use even your pain. I'm going to show you how to use even your hard stories. I'm going to show you how to use your hard upbringing so you can minister to somebody, so you can share your story with someone, so you can learn how to show compassion to somebody. You know, sometimes we go through things in life just so that we can show compassion and care for people that go through the same things after us. What God is saying is, I can redeem your story. If you let me, follow me and I will show you. Follow me and I will teach you to be a fisher of men. See, sometimes we look at our life upbringing and we see this stuff as setbacks. We see our life upbringing, we see things as a setback. But what God is saying, that no, all this time I'm looking at this and all I see is a setup. I see a setup. I, I'm ready to set you up for ministry, son. I'm ready to set you up for ministry, daughter. I know what the enemy was trying to do in your life, but I'm going to use all of that. I'm going to turn it all around for my glory. I'm going to turn it all around for my mission in your life. See, someone grew up without a father in your home, and now, now you're ministering now to fatherless children in the streets. Maybe someone grew up hurt and abused and, 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 and hurt growing up, but maybe you're not, now God is giving you a heart for people that have been hurt and abused growing up. Someone right now grew up angry and now you know how to minister and you can see through someone's anger to see the hurt and the pain in their heart someone right now is being called out to become a fisherman of people look at Jeremiah 1 5 before I shaped you in the womb I knew all about you before you day before you saw the light of day I had holy plans for you a prophet to the nations that's what I had in mind for you. God already had plans for you. Plans for greatness. Plans for great things. Plans to touch people's lives, to reach people. And he can use whatever situation you've gone through, he can turn around and use for his glory. That's why he calls us more than conquerors. Because he could even turn what we thought was a loss, he could turn that into a victory. And he can turn all of our defeats into wins. He can turn our pain into, into bringing, bringing somebody peace in someone's life. He can turn those things for his glory. So if you look at the next verse in verse 20, it says, And they left their nets at once and followed him. They left their nets at once, and they followed him. See, after every call is a response. What's your response going to be tonight? You know, like I said earlier, this night was not by chance. This is Jesus that's here tonight. And anytime we read the scripture, especially the words of Jesus, that's Jesus coming to life, speaking directly to you. And this right now is a call not from me, but from Jesus himself. And after every call is a response, an opportunity to decide if I'm going to answer that call or if I'm going to ignore that call. See, Jesus makes a call for the disciples to follow him, and they respond immediately with no hesitation. You know, that's what we need right now in our hearts. We need a right away yes. We need a right away yes to God. Some of us have a, I'll get to it, yes. 
oh, I'm not saying no to God. I'm not saying no. I, I, I'm, I'm saying yes to his plan, but just, but just in a little bit. I'm, I'm, yo, no, I'm, I definitely want the will of God in my life. For sure, brother. For sure, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. I want the will of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your will. But let's just wait really quick. I've just got, I need, a, I need uh, seven to 14 business days before I can, uh, you know, fully sign the dotted line. Some of us, we got that. We have a, in a little bit, yes. We, but what we need is a right away yes to God. We need a right away yes to God. See, the, the, the we, we, when, when we have a right away yes to God, it's, it's always more effective when we hear something and we immediately do it. We hear something and we do it right away. See, God will give, a, God will give you a word for today. God will give you a plan and a word for today. And what you do with that word today will change and impact your life today and tomorrow. But we need a right away yes. We need to say, God, yes. If God says go, you go. If God says left, you turn left. If God says right, you turn right. Whatever he, we say, yes to his plan. See, the disciples had no second thought. They, and they, they could have taken their time. They could have said, all right, God, hang on. I'll meet you. I'll meet you. Um, just let me go hang. Let me go finish my job. We got we to gotta pull these fish in. Uh, uh, let me go get with my family real quick. Let me go handle my uh, uh, business real quick. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. What God is saying is this word is for today. This word is for right now. And some of us, we think, we think we got all the time in the world, but we're learning more and more and more. That tomorrow is not promised for anybody. And if God is calling you tonight, it's for a purpose. It's for intention. It's because he sees you. He notices you. He cherishes you. And he has a desire to see you walking in relationship with him and walking in your ultimate purpose. Enough just talking about stuff. It's time we do it. This, this call is a radical call. It's not a casual call. It's not casually. It's not every Sunday and Wednesday night at home it, chilling with the family. No, this is a radical call that God is calling us to walk into. This is a radical change of priorities. In a moment, the disciples radically reprioritize their entire life and put God at number one. And they put everything at second, third, fourth, fifth place. And they don't even have a close second. And what God is saying, I need a disciple. I need a son. I need a daughter who is putting me at first place in their life and they're radically reprioritizing their life to make God number one, to make God the foundation, to put God on the right and the left and front behind and every area of my life is surrounded by the will of God and everything else follows that. How many disciples do we have here tonight at home? How many disciples are saying I have a right away yes to God in my heart? Mark 16 15 says he said to them Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. See, Jesus wasn't just calling them to say yes to being Lord of their life, but saying yes to the call of reaching other people. Jesus is reaching you so you can reach out to others. He's reaching you so you can reach out. It's sad. We got people that have been reached, but they're not reaching back. We have people right now that are being filled every single week with the word. But not all of that word was meant for you. Some of that word, some of what you're learning, some of what you're hearing from God is meant to be meant to give you make a give you a tool to reach out to somebody. You know, I don't I'm not really receiving anything from this. Maybe because it wasn't for you, maybe it was for the person you're gonna see at the grocery store. I'm not, really, I'm not really feeling this tonight. This message, you know, I, I, I've been there, done that. Maybe because this is for someone at home that's hurting, that needs to know that Jesus cares for them and sees them. See, Jesus is reaching you. Maybe God, maybe you already have a relationship with God. Maybe you've been coming to the church for so many years. Maybe, I, I guarantee you, you, you probably preach this message better than I can. But, but that's not the point. The point is this, that God is calling you not to, to be reached again and again, but to reach somebody else. It's time we stop making this whole Christianity thing about me. This is not a buffet. This is a time we roll up our sleeves. We hit the streets. We let people know that God loves them. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Letting someone know about Jesus. It's time we reach out. It's time we don't, just, we, we don't just come here to be reached, but we reach people. 
See, back in the day, oh, this is so crazy. They're, 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 these disciples, they're fishing, right? When you think of fishing, what's some of the first things you think of? For me, I think of, you know, I, I've been fishing. I've been fishing like once in my life. But you wake up super early. You got your coffee, got your coat. Get your fishing poles, make sure all your bait's ready. Jump in the car, drive out to a lake. Oh, it's so serene. It's beautiful. You get in the boat, you throw your line, you kick back, throw your feet up, sip your coffee, have some good talks, and you wait. Ah. But you know that was that whole idea of fishing was foreign. If you if you describe that to a fisherman back in the day, they're gonna say, What, what kind of fishing is that? See, back in the day, they didn't fish with a fishing pole and a line. They fished with a net. And this net was so big, it had these huge weights on the end of it. So when they threw the net out into the water, it fell, and it fell, and it picked up, and, 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 and then the fish would get caught, and then they would have to pull the net up. And they would have to pull the net up, but this was not a one-man job. It took a team effort to pull up all the fish that were in the net. And the fish were fighting. They're trying to swim away. They're heavy. You got a lot of fish. You got a big, you, when you got a big, uh, uh, what do you call it? When you got a big catch, then you're pulling them all up. It takes several men to pull these fish into the boat. See, when we think, when, when we hear this word teach you to be a fisher of men, I think too many times we think this is just a casual, let me kick back, throw my feet up, sip my coffee, throw my line and wait for a fish to come to me. But what God is saying, no, I'm going to teach you to be a real fisher of men. I'm going to teach you to get in there. I'm going to teach you to throw the net. I'm going to teach you to be in unity with the body of Christ. I'm going to teach you to get in unity with the church. And everyone pull their weight up. And everyone work together to pull the fish into the boat. See, God is not calling us to some casual, you know, casual ministry. God is calling us to radical ministry. God is calling us to radical gospel preaching. God is calling us to radical life transformation. That is why God is calling calling us, you and I, to the inner cities of the world to preach the gospel, to love people, to meet their needs, to make disciples, and to develop leaders. God is calling you and I to do this. The mission of our church this year, our motto this year, is reaching one in 2021. Everyone reaching one in 2021. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach the one. But this is not a line and a little, you know, oh, wow, well, I think I got a guppy. No, this is a real collective mission where we get in unity. We need to get ready right now for the biggest Easter we've ever had as a church. We need to get ready for the biggest marriage challenge coming up that we've ever had as a church. Oh, wow, we just want to pack out the church. No, we want to pull up the souls that we caught in the net. We want to pull up the new lives that Jesus cares for. We want to pull up the new people. Their lives are going to be changed forever. Enough making this about us let's start adding some eternal value to people's lives we're going to come together on easter sunday and everyone's mission is this everyone reach one family say this with me say one family we're all going to reach one family for easter and we're going to invite them but when we get that call see pastor has talked about this a lot already but when we get that call we need to have a right away yes we didn't have a right away yes. You know what? This is what God is showing me too. You know, God was speaking to me and convicting me. I need to have a right away yes. Because I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I got a lot of time for Easter. I got, no, but I need to work. I need to, I need to work. I need to hunt. I need to find. I need to fish. I need to pull my weight up. There's someone out there that God is calling you to reach, calling me to reach. And we need to, we need to right away yes. What we're going to do is this. I want you to invite one family to Easter. And when you find that family, and they commit to coming. I want you to take a picture with them. Post it on social media and use this hashtag. Use the hashtag the way Easter 2021. Put it on social media. Say, I got a family coming to Easter and hashtag the way Easter 2021. And we're going to use that picture and we're going to highlight all the new families. We're going to highlight all the new souls. We're going to highlight all the new friends and families that are going to be joining us this Easter. Whether in person or, or, or uh, maybe you're out of state, you want to reach somebody online, post it. We would love to see you reaching someone online. How many can commit to that? How many saying, I got a right away yes for that mission? I'm ready to reach somebody. The last thing I want to say is this, verse 21, says this, a little farther up the shore, he saw two brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets, and he called them to come too. See, 
It's interesting. Peter and Andrew, they were throwing their net. James and John were repairing their net. So you might, you might relate more to Peter and Andrew. You may feel like your life is established. You may feel like you're ready, you know, gun-ho in ministry. Maybe, you're, you know, maybe, maybe your life is busy. You've got a great career, great relationships, great job. You know, you're doing healthy. You're doing strong. Or you might relate a little bit more to James and John. You feel like you've got a lot of repairing to do. Maybe you feel like you already had a run in ministry. Maybe you feel exhausted. Or maybe you feel like you have a big wound. Maybe you feel like you had a major fall. Maybe you had a major fall. Maybe you have some major pain or some hurt. Maybe something was said. Maybe something, someone hurt you. Maybe, uh, I don't know what situation or what circumstance you're in, but you might relate a little bit more to James and John who are sitting there in their boat repairing their net and trying to fix the pain and try to fix the hurt, fix the wound, fix the injury, fix the scars and, and, and fix the offense and, and fix the bitterness and fix the anger that someone left you. Maybe fix the anger that your dad was never there. Maybe fix the things that, that the people that came against you. Maybe fix your situation or your relationships or maybe you feel like you need some repairing but Jesus is calling you the same way he's calling someone who is already throwing their net see you may feel like you're not ready but Jesus is calling you even if you feel like you're not ready he's calling you and he does it again. He, and he does it the exact same way. He calls them and he says, two, it's the same situation. You got two brothers throwing the net and you got two brothers repairing the net. And the same, he doesn't say, oh, you're repairing your net. Okay, maybe let me know when you get that fixed um, and I'll come back. Uh, how, many, how much time do you need? Okay, cool. Uh, do you need any help, tools or anything? Okay, cool. You get that fixed and I'll be back. I'll be back to help you, okay? I'll meet you right here. No, that's not what Jesus is doing. Jesus said, I see you trying to repair your net. I see you try to fix the wound that you had. I see you try to do this on your own, but I'm calling you right now. Wounds and all, I'm calling you to me. And I'm calling you right now to lay down your pain at my feet. I'm calling you to lay your nets there. I'm calling you to lay down everything that has hurt you, everything that has abused you, every scar, every wound, every offense, every pain, every hurt. Lay it all down. Leave your net right there and come follow me. You may not feel ready. You may feel inadequate. You may feel lost, abandoned. You may feel like you've fallen or you may feel like you've had your run and you're done in ministry but what God is saying I'm calling you right now all of the the the, the repair nets and all whether you got a functioning now or not I am calling you to a life of purpose to a life of ministry and to a life where you're fulfilling the greatest call that you could ever walk in so don't sit there mending your nets for the rest of your life Learn to receive the forgiveness, the mercy that Jesus has for you. See, some of us, we, we can't move forward because we're not willing to leave our nets behind. How many right now, I wonder, are, are so married, so devoted to the net that we're willing we're willing to sacrifice our life's destiny. How many of us right now have been so caught up with what I have or maybe caught up with what I can't do that we're willing to abandon God's greatest call in your life? How many are there? God is saying, tonight is that night. I've purposely come here to your home. You may be listening on a phone. You may be, you're probably listening on TV. Maybe you're at a watch party. Maybe you're alone right now. God is saying, I'm calling you. I see you. I cherish you. I love you. I'm paying attention to you. And I could see right now that the net you're holding on to is holding you back. Jesus is calling some people tonight to leave their nets, to abandon it all. 
Not say, Jesus, I'll come back. I'll think about it. I'll pray about it. See, we never have to pray about something that God already said to do. God has given you an invitation tonight. What's holding you back? This last verse I want to share with Psalms 147.3. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. James and John, verse 22, it says, they immediately followed him, leaving their boat and their father behind. Tonight, Jesus is making an invitation to you. And he's calling you right now. There's someone watching right now who's been working so hard at fixing their own life. And you're frustrated. You're frustrated with yourself. You're not happy when you look in the mirror. You're not excited about tomorrow. And you're going through the motions. Miserable. Trying to repair your net. And God is saying, give that to me. Let me take that. I don't know what you're going through in life right now. One thing I do know, I know this with all faith, with 100% certainty, with no doubt in my mind, that whatever it is that you're going through, that fight, that fight is no match for our King. This is a fight that Jesus has already won. And he's inviting you right now into victory. He's inviting you right now to a life of wholeness, to a life of peace, a life of purpose. And he's saying tonight, I want to give you your life's greatest fulfillment, a life's greatest purpose. It's not a thing. It's not money. It's not a status. It's not a promotion. It's not a, it's not a certain, it's not fame, it's not popularity, it's none of that. It's, Jesus is saying, it's me. Jesus is saying right now, I, I'm your life's greatest fulfillment. I'm your greatest peace. Jesus is saying, I am your peace. Jesus is saying, I am your hope. Jesus is saying, I am your life. Jesus is saying, I am the truth that you need. Jesus is saying, I am everything you need. I want you right now at your home, I want you to do this really quick. Just close your eyes. You might be around some people, but it's okay because Jesus is talking to you. I know there's, there might be people in the room, but close your eyes for a second. Everyone there, close your eyes. And I want you to just think. And picture Jesus walking right up to you and calling you. Sometimes you see yourself in that picture and you see yourself broken. But Jesus is still smiling, calling you. And so happy that he's found you. Tonight, if you want to give your heart to Jesus. And you want to surrender everything. And you want to be redeemed and set free. And you want Jesus to forgive you of your sin. And you want Jesus to take the nets that we've been holding on to and give you purpose in life. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're ready to repent today for ignoring God or repent for all your sin. And repent basically means turn away from your old life and turn to your new life, which is Jesus. If you're ready to do that, your eyes closed where you're at I want you to just raise your hand up raise your hand up raise your hand up at your home raise your hand now open your eyes everyone there open your eyes if there's someone raising their hand right now at your house I want you to just give them a little hand clap or congratulate them and we're going to say this prayer together let's pray bow your head and close your eyes we're going to say a prayer that's going to declare 
Jesus as our Lord. We're going to speak to the Lord right now. Say this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I give you my heart. Forgive me for doing it my way. I surrender it all to you. I let go of my nets. And I give it all to you, Jesus. I want you to be Lord of my life. I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead to give me salvation and to give me a new life. I want that new life. I receive that new life tonight. And I say yes to your call. Thank you for choosing me when no one else did. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Right where you are, just give God a little bit of praise, a hand clap. Just begin to say, just begin to thank God for what he did. Now we're gonna do something in the homes right now. And I want everyone at home, you can stand up. Even here, you can stand up. And right now, I just want you to take a moment. If anyone gave their life to Jesus, I just want you to, to ask them if they need any prayer or if there's anyone right now in your home that needs prayer. Maybe it's just you and your spouse, maybe you and your kids. I want everyone to right now, if anyone needs prayer in your home, just ask them. And together as a group, let's pray for those needs. And what we're gonna do, the worship team is gonna come up and they're gonna sing one more song. And they're gonna sing and as they're worshiping, we're gonna invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in your home. And we're gonna believe for a breakthrough in your home. And we're gonna believe that God is gonna restore you and redeem you. And he can turn everything the enemy used for evil, he can turn it around for good. I wanna pray, God, I lift up every home. I lift up every family. I lift up every single mother. I lift up every single father. I lift up father, even the children right now. I lift up the teens, God. I lift up the young adults to you right now in the name of Jesus. I lift up those that, that maybe feel like something's missing. I lift up those that feel like they got hurt or pain in their heart. And God, I pray that you would meet them right where they're at and God you would show them a brand new life and you would show them something they've never seen before bring healing bring power bring your fire and bring your anointing and your Holy Spirit your presence into every home and in every situation God and we worship you and we praise you worship team let's go ahead and praise the Lord and worship him tonight for what you did tonight. Tonight, if you gave your life to Jesus, I want you to go to igotsaved.com. Go there and fill out the, a quick form so that you can learn what your next step is. And we want to help you take your next step. Your next step is starting at the way, which is a class that can help you get baptized to show you what it means to follow Jesus and to grow and walk with him. So go to igotsaved.com. Do it right now. And if you're with somebody, maybe they can help you out. But let's go there together. We love you so much. God bless you. And don't forget this Sunday, we have a message. Pastor Marco is going to be bringing a word this Sunday, 9 and 11. Be here on campus. Maybe if you're out of state, watch us online. And Sunday night, we got our Valentine's Day virtual date night. 
so you can register on the app tonight. We love you guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. And remember, if God is for you, there is no one that can come against you. Have a good night, everybody.